What's up, YouTube? I wanted to go over a lab that I designed to help me study for my RCSA certification. And I wanted to design this lab to go over some of the key concepts that they wanted you to study for to receive research. And this lab particularly is for organizing a file system. In this lab, I will have you and I step in the shoes of a system administrator at a fictional co company named Gourmet, a company that specializes in smart kitchen appliances and recipe apps. And your mission is to organize the company file system effectively. And the importance of a well-structured file system is crucial for facilitating collaborations among all the various departments that you can find in a company. And I wanted to make a small scale version emulating this corporate environment. Throughout this lab, you will engage a practical task that simulate real world scenarios faced by many system administrators. And by organizing directories, managing files and implementing version control, you will gain valuable skills that are essential for any IT professional in the industry. And by the end of this lab, you will be able to create a structured directory system, manage file and directories using command line tools and implement symbolic and hard links and practice basic version control concepts. And if you wanted to gain access to the lab, you can find it at my website, kobesbell.com. And if you go to the main page, you scroll down and you see a section called labs for studying. You click view, view labs or CSA labs. And then you see lab one, organize a file system. You click it and boom, it should go straight to your downloads. All right, so now that we got all that out the way, we can go over the instructions. And the instruction says, now that we have an understanding of what we're gonna be working with, we can get straight into organize the file system. So make sure if you have this downloaded and you're going following me, Make sure you, uh, if you're following me, all the solutions will be right there. But if you're going based off your own and you want to use this video as to see if you're doing things right, then make sure you read and follow the steps carefully to ensure a cohesive setup. And now we can go straight into this. So I can log in to my user. And now let's let's go in what it says. So part one, setting up the main directory. So we can begin by making the main directory that will hold all the content that we are going to need for our lab. This is to keep all the all the files on our system separate. And we want to create a directory named Gourmet in your home directory. And inside Gourmet, you should create the following subdirectories: research, development, marketing, and support. So we can do that now. So I'm in, I like running PWD, which shows my current working directory. But if you don't know this tilde right here, usually means you're in your home directory. And but we can confirm that with PWD. All right. So, yep, we're in our home directory. And let's list all the files in our directory just to do it. Let's just do ls. And there we go. Got desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, all the other stuff that typically are in the home directory. And so it says we want to create a directory named Gourmet in your home directory. And so to do that, you do make dir Gourmet. Enter. And now we run LS again. We see Gourmet. And it says now it says in the subdirectory, makes subdirectories called research, development, marketing, and support. And what I like to do, and this is a shortcut, if we want to make all the subdirectories, because we could, I can say this, right? We can do, we can do make dir gourmet. I did tab to autocomplete. We could do make dir gourmet research, right? We can do that. But if you want to make it easier and you want to get all in one, you could do make your escape dot to get the directory to use the last argument that you use. And then you could do four slash. And then you can do curly braces. And this is a cool thing. I can type all the subdirectories that I want followed by a comma. So I can do research. Comma. I could do development. Column. 
I could do marketing, comma, and I could do support, comma. But I just noticed I'm missing one thing. So I'm missing one of the options, flags that I can use in the front that will be needed to do this. So if I do dash P, this is like making sure that the parent exists, right? Because if I do this, make sure the parent exists and I do size V to verbose verbosity. And this is pretty much comes back to the terminal is showing, hey, like the directory was made pretty much. It'll just tell us like oh, the directory was made and we will see it. And so I press enter and boom, this is the verbose right here. Hopefully I'm saying that right, but this shows that all the directories are made. So now if I do ls dash r gourmet, boom, we see all our directories. So this is that, and then we get gourmet marketing, uh, research and support. Now in part two, it said now that we have our main structure, let's focus on organizing the research department. So navigate to the research directory and create the subdirectories, prototypes, user studies, and competitors. Okay, so let's do that. So we CD into Gourmet and Research. And let me fix this real quick so we don't have to keep on going to the other one. All right, so now that we're in this page, it says that we want to make the following subdirectory prototypes user studies and competitors. And now that we know that we have the parent directory right here, what we could do instead of doing that slash P flag, we don't need that anymore. So all we could do is to make dir, I was doing like slash V, the verbals, to show that it is made. And then what we could do is just do this. Prototypes, comma, user studies, comma and competitors right and boom so now if i do ls dash r oop i did it in the wrong thing so what i'm about to do is i gotta go back i did that in the wrong directory so what i'm supposed to do is do ls Gourmet. I did. No, I was wrong. I did it right. <laughs> um. So yeah, there we go. So now we have all the the subdirectories in there. And now in the prototypes directory, create the following files to document your project: Smart Oven One, Smart Oven V Two, and Smart Fridge V One. Okay. And so what do we do is CD into prototypes. And I'm going to show you another trick that you can do. And this is kind of like this one right here. But instead of using these, make using these to make a directory, we'll be using these to pretty much use the update the V1 and update the V2 for smart oven. So what I can do is touch to make the file and do smart oven v curly braces one dot dot two right dot txt and if i press enter it will make smart oven v1 and then make another file called smart oven v2 using this curly brace right here so if i press enter do ls as you can see, we got Smart Oven V1 and Smart Oven V2, and then we can make the Smart Fridge. So let's do do up two times, delete that, and then what we can do is escape. It didn't, I didn't copy that, so I can just do Smart Fridge V1 txt. And that was a massive typo. And we don't have to do the same thing with the curly brace for this one because it only got one version of Smart Fridge, and so we don't need that. 
All right, so now we can get to part three. Next, we'll turn our attention to the development department. Change to the development directory and create multiple files. Use a single command to create files named app version one through app version five. And this will help us manage the different versions of applications effectively, efficiently. All right, so let's, let's go CD. Let's go back to our home directory. And then from here, we can CD to Gourmet, LS, CD to development. All right, and so now we're in the, in the development directory and we, it says it wants us to make a file named app version one through app version two.py. And if you're wondering, you can do the same thing with this one. Instead of right making, instead of doing something like touch app version 1.0.py and then do app version 2.0.py, all you can do, all you got to do is this one dot dot five, one through five, all right? And from here, what you got to do is press enter ls and now you got all the different versions simple make it easy make your life easy all right and so now what it wants us to do is create a symbolic link called current app that points to app version and this will make accessing the latest version easier and it wants us to do that in our home directory so sorry i was reading that on another page so let's create a symbolic link in your home directory called current app that points to app version 5.0 and this will make accessing it easier. So let's CD back to our home directory. And so to make a symbolic link, all we got to do is ln s um, current app. And then what we want to do to that one is from gourmet development app version 5. Oh, I did it backwards. I did it backwards. So LSHS, boom, at version five to current app. There we go. And so now if I do LS-LI, we see that we have the symbolic link created from current app to this. Boom. And if there's any kind of tips or instruction that any like anybody want to show me that if you're working with Linux, please don't feel free to, you know, throw those out there because I'm still working with Linux, still learning, and any kind of suggestions is always great. Or tips. So now let's organize some assets for marketing. In the marketing directory, create the following subdirectories: images, videos, and presentations. So what we can do is CD to Gourmet. Let's clear the screen. And to clear the screen without doing clear, all you got to do is do Control L and boom, it'll clear your screen. So you don't have to type in clear every time because that can get redundant, can take too much time and you want to simplify the process. That's all, as always. All right, so it says, yeah, make a mar marketing directory, CD to the marketing directory, Create the following subdirectory images, videos, and presentations. So let's do that. So CD, May, marketing, boom. And now let's do this again. If you remember, we could do make dir dash v and images, videos, presentations. Enter ls r. Boom, and it shows that we have all the directories here. Boom, all right. And in the images directory, create 10 empty files with name formatted as product image 10. XX, where XX is a two digit number from zero, I mean, from one to 10, and this is for keeping your images organized. And if remember, what we can do is just do touch, the name product image, do product underscore image. And then to do this, if you remember the curly braces, zero one dot dot 10. 
script.png. It created the files. LS. Oops. LS. Boom. And I didn't see it into the images directly. So what we can do, we can move all these in one. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So I just do MV, right? And then I do, I'm going to do press escape dot or escape period to get my last argument. And I don't have to type this whole thing out again. I just press escape dot, escape dot, escape dot. And then I was able to see my last argument. And then move that to the images. LS to make sure that was done. CD to images. LS. All right, now we have all our images there. And now it says organize files. So move all files with even numbers in their names to a subdirectory called event photos. This will help you keep track of a specific event or promotions. Okay. So to do that, what we got to do is do MV. Oh, first off, let's make the subdirectory. Uh, make directionally, make dir event photos. And then to move these, all we got to do is kind of do the same thing with these curly braces. Let's do MV. Um, escape dot, escape dot, escape dot, escape dot, escape dot, escape dot. Escape dot. There we go. <laughs> and so let's do this. Dash two, comma, dash four, dash zero six, dash zero eight, and then that's comma. And now we have all these and move all these to event photos. LS. And now we see all the odd ones are in here. And then we see these to event photos. LS and boom. All our even ones are in there. Okay. And now it says handling support documentation. So navigate to the support directory and create a fax file. Create a file named fax.txt and add the text frequently asked questions. All right. And now I feel like this is going to be a cool one, right? So you're going to see how more hard link work. And this is going to be a pretty cool one. So what we're going to do is CD the CD back to our home directory, and the CD to Gourmet, and it said CD to support. All right, support. And so now that we're here, what we're going to do is just create a a file named facts and add the text frequently frequently asked questions. And to do this, I'm going to do this in Vim. So it's our text editor where we can edit text facts. Press I to insert frequently asked questions. Escape WQ to escape. Enter. And now let's just cat this or we can just do head facts because it's only one line, so it really doesn't matter. And see, okay, now we see that it is there. We could do head, which you see would look at the first 10 lines of, of a file, or we could do cat, which shows pretty much the whole file. I just did head, just, just it's just only one line. It doesn't matter what I did, cat or head in this case. All right, and so now what it wants us to do is create a heart link to fax name user manual. Create a heart link to fax.txt to user manual troubleshooting and contact info. And so to do this, it's pretty much the same thing. It's still doing, instead of doing LN dash S, which is a sub link, we just do LN. So we do LN fax and user manual txt. And then let's do that again, LN fax. And then what we gotta do is do this. T troubleshooting at txt ln dot 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 and then other one is contact info dot txt and now if I do a ls dash i 
right? And let's do ls-li. We can see that all these have the same ID. And that means they're all hard linked together, right? And so if I change facts.txt, so let's let's do this. Let me clear the page. Remember, control L. So if I do cat facts.txt, right? It shows frequently asked questions. So now if I do cat user manual, it shows frequently asked questions. And so on, cat troubleshooting, frequently asked questions, and cat contact cat contact frequently asked questions and so now this is one of the cool part about hard links so if i change any of the text and frequently asked questions it's going to change the text for all these other files so let's go to them facts text and let's do um let's make it simple let's create two lines um do that and then question number one. This is a random text. I don't know. Not even a question. All right. So now let's escape WQ. And now we change that change for facts, right? If so now to show that, let's do this cat facts right here and show that. Okay. We got a new added text. So now let's do cat user manual. Boom. It changes that right and it will do all the other things it will do the same for troubleshooting and contact info so now you might have a question what if I choose user manual oh sorry what if I change user manual txt well let's find out will that change the facts let's find out so let's do this let's insert question two this is not even all right escape wq now we see that right this cat facts whoa as you see since these are hard link if you change one of the files right if you hard link two files three files together if you change the content of any one of those since they're hard link it changes it for all of them just to remember that hard link is pretty cool all right so now let's continue on and let's pretty much wrap this up so part six so implementing basic version control so let's implement basic version control practices so in the development directory create a new subdirectory called versions Copy Python files, copy all Py files from the development directory for easy access and management. In the version directory, create a new text file named version log and add entries for each Python you copy, including file names and date to keep track of changes over time. Navigate back to your home directory and update the subaltern link to point to the latest version file in the version directory. All right. One second. All right. So let's do this. Let's get that started. So what we're going to do is tell us first CD into the development directory. So CD back home, or if if you want to go home without typing CD dash home, all you got to do right is just do today. I was wrong. Okay, so now we want to see the into the development directory. And then make a subdirectory called make dir versions. And then copy all the Python files. Oops. I never so I made a mistake. I never navigated there. CD development. Make their version instead of typing it out. There we go. Oop.
mistakes. There we go. And now let's do ls and it says move all the dot pi files to the version directory. And to do that, all we gotta do is copy, right? At versions one dot dot do five. All right. We can do this, right? So we can do that dot pi. We can do this. Or which is easier if it wants to copy all the files, what did we have what did we do? what if it wasn't at versions, right? Dot pi. What if it was like hello world dot pi or you know any other thing dot pi other than the app versions, right? It says copy all, all the Python files. And so what we're gonna do is use a wildcard. So we can do star or asterisk dot pi and copy that the versions. And so now we see the or ls dash r version. We'll see the copy versions. So let's move cd into versions ls. And now let's in the versions create a new file called version logs. So touch version underscore logs dot txt and add entries for each of the Python files you copy, including names. And date file names to keep track of the changes over time. So what I can do with this one, I haven't tried this part yet, but what we could do is something like this. Just thinking about it, we can do the ls dash la, right? Or ls dash l. Let's do ls dash l. Okay, it shows that. So let's do ls that's l and then do t dash a that's version dot log. And now this is pretty much adding all this into the or I don't like that approach and so this is my troubleshoot. I I could have definitely make this simple so let's let's remove the version log one more time and let's let's touch it again and let's make it one more time i found a better way of doing this so what i can do is do ls that's l and let's see if this works dot pi pipe t dash a version dot log boom so now it follows what it wants us to do. And so when I did the dot pipe pi, I mean the asterisk pi, I'm only doing ls for all the dot pi files, not the version log. Because if I did that one, if I did lsl, this right here would be in the version log that text, which it didn't ask us for do. And so now if I do at version logs, boom, we have all the things. And so this t dash a pretty much it appends this command the left of this pipe to this file and that's what we just did right here and so now i told us to go back to our home directory let me clear this page cd to our home directory and update the symbolic link to current update the symbolic link to point to the latest version in the version directory and so let's do ls that's li to show the symbolic link so instead of making the current app go to this, what we're going to do is ln dash s gourmet relevant versions app dot five to current app. And let's do a man. Let's do the man ln. So let's see if we can update. And this is this is one of the cool thing about man pages. You can see if you can update symbolic link. I haven't tried this yet. I have not tried this. Um let's see. I don't see that this is a thing. 
make a backup, allow the super user to remove existing destination file. I don't know what that means, but Or did I don't think I did it backwards either. So let's do this. Let's see if the dash F flag helps too. And it worked. Okay. And so now let's just do LS dash li. And it worked. Okay, there we go. See, that's the point of using man pages as well. And I'm thinking about making a YouTube video about man pages as well, because I feel like that is useful to learn and how to navigate. Because me using that man page seriously just helped me understand how to update the surveillance link. Is that the right way? I believe so, but if anybody know that's not the right way and there's a better way of doing it, please add that into the chat. That'd be really useful. I'm always open for any tips because I'm still learning this myself and this was a lab to help me learn and study for my RCSA certification. So any advice, any tips is always grateful. And now to wrap this up, Part seven, clean it up. Let's clean it up after ourselves. Remove all the content for our next lab. And remove the gourmet directory using the rm command with the recursive flag. And this is easy. So all we gotta do is CD when well, we're already home. All you do is let's clean up our environment. RM dash R gourmet. Enter. And let's remove the symbolic link. I don't know what happened to the symbolic link after. Yep, it's gone. So let's just move right now. LS and boom. All right, we're back to normal. All right. And that is pretty much for the lab. Um, that was a lab that I just designed to help me study for my RTSA certification. And it was a lab that, you know, feel like it could be useful going through the different commands, learning how things work and, you know, putting your fingers to the keyboard and typing things out and working through it. It's different from just like, you know, watching a video, like what you're watching right now. Like, so my recommendation is get this lab, download it from my website right here, download it from the website, try to run through this lab. And if you need help or if you have any questions or you're stuck, watch this video. But number one thing is download this lab, try to work it through yourself. And if you can, if you can go throughout with watching the video, great. If you need the video, use it. But overall, thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it and enjoyed it and it was useful for you, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything to help. You know, if you enjoyed it, just leave a comment, like it, and it will be greatly appreciated. And I'm thinking about making more videos like these, making more lives for sure, and going from here. So thank you for watching. and. For the next until the next one.